So today we're going to talk about independent and dependent clauses. Um, this does not have to be hard. I promise. So let's first we have to figure out what a clause is. So a clause is just a group of words that has a subject and a verb. And I can hear some of you saying, I thought that was a sentence. You're right. It's a certain kind of clause that makes a sentence. So we know what a subject and a verb are. We've known this. We've talked about it every year since you learned to write a sentence. Subject is the who or the what the sentence is about. And the verb is what that who or what is actually doing. Um, let's go into independent clauses because that's what you know best. Those are your sentences. They express a complete thought. They stand alone as a sentence. Or they can, can be they can be combined with other clauses to form a more complex sentence, sometimes just a more interesting sentence too. However, when it's even when it's joined with another clause, an independent clause can always stand by itself. It can always be taken out and say, this is a complete clause all by itself. It doesn't need the other clauses to help it make sense. Let's look at some examples. Mom took the car to get fixed. Who's the sentence about? Mom. What'd she do? She took the car. That's a complete sentence. It's a complete thought. It's an independent clause. It stands by itself. Gabriel's playing with toys in his room. Who's the sentence about? Gabriel. What is he doing? Playing with toys in his room. Stands alone. Look at this sentence. I will wait to buy a car until I have saved more money. If I stopped the sentence at the end of the phrase, I will wait to buy a car, still a complete thought. I'm the subject, and what am I going to do? I'm going to wait to buy a car. It doesn't need the until I have saved more money to make sense. Now, it adds more detail to the sentence, but it's not necessary for it to be a complete sentence. So, I will wait to buy a car is an independent clause. When Angela visits, we will surprise her with the birthday party. If I just said the sentence, we will surprise her with the birthday party, that makes sense. That part is an independent clause. Nate will be late for the concert because he can't get a ride right away. Nate will be late for the concert is a clause that stands alone. It's a complete sentence all by itself. While Anna hesitated to share her opinion with her manager, she did it anyway. The sentence, she did it anyway, is a complete thought. It doesn't need all the rest of it. It's good because it gives it more detail, but it's not necessary. Even though it rained during our vacation, we still had a good time. All the details, it rained, we were on vacation, that's part of the beginning part. It's good. It's what makes it a rich sentence, a detail-rich sentence. It's not necessary. We still had a good time is a complete thought all by itself because it is an independent clause. Now let's look at dependent clauses. Sometimes you might hear those called subordinate clauses. It doesn't express a complete thought. It can't stand alone as a sentence. It has to be combined with another well, with one or more independent clauses to form a sentence. Um, it'll begin with a word such as after, although, because, before, if, since. There's a whole bunch of them. You can see them there. Um, it, we're going to call those subordinate conjunctions. Let's look at our dependent clause. When we get enough snow, we're going to go sledding. The when we get enough snow, if I walked up to you on the street and said, when we get enough snow, you would think I'd lost my mind. It doesn't make sense. It's not a complete thought on its own. It needs the rest of the sentence for it to make sense. It needs the, the following part. We're going to go sledding. That part is a sentence all by itself. That's an independent clause. We've attached a dependent clause to the beginning of it to say, when we get enough snow. Damien won't be able to play in the game. Because he injured his foot. If I just said, because he injured his foot, it's not a complete thought. I have to have, Damien won't be able to play in the game. That by itself is a complete thought. That's the independent clause that I've attached to the dependent clause, because he injured his foot. Does anyone know 
what we are having for dinner. What we are having for dinner needs that first part. It needs, does anyone know, to make it make sense. I'm trying to decide which book I want to read. Which book I want to read next is not a complete thought. It is a dependent clause. It depends on the information in the first part. I'm trying to decide. Where I put the car keys depends on the first part that I forgot. If Charlotte decides to join the softball team, doesn't it sound like it needs more? It's not a complete sentence. It's not a complete thought. It's not an independent clause. It depends on the rest of this to make sense. The ending of this, then we will have enough members. It depends on that part for it to make sense. That's what makes it a dependent clause. I can't wait until the pizza gets here. I can't wait is a sentence all by itself. Until the pizza gets here is not. I know that can be a little confusing if you can get in your head that if it's independent, it doesn't need anything else. If it's independent, it's a complete sentence all by itself. It doesn't need anybody else to make it whole. A dependent clause is full of good information, but it, it's not whole. It doesn't stand up by itself. It doesn't have... It, it's not the complete thought that we're looking for when we're th thinking about a sentence or a complete independent clause. It's a dependent clause. It depends on the other information around it. Okay? Take that information that you just got and let's go do some practice.